Um, why don't we get started? Get started. Um, Kyle, do I have to do anything to get us started, or can I just um, kind of start talking? Uh, Kyle, okay, with planning, I think you can go ahead and just um, uh, get started and um, okay. any opening comments you have, and then uh, I'll go ahead okay. and read the script. Okay, well, I want to, uh, I want to welcome everybody to, uh, to the task force and to the meeting. Hi, Bird. Um, and, um, and I just want to say a few words before we, before we really get started. I tell you that I'm honored uh, that the, that the city, county city commission has asked me to chair the task force, uh, looking at possible modifications with specific aspects of our former government. Um, the two aspects the commission has identified how to elect our nonpartisan mayor and uh, how commissions are elected. Commissioners are elected at large district or combo terms of office. Um, those are going to be our general areas, but um, given the variety of answers to those questions throughout the country uh, nationally, uh, we can be assured that there is not one best answer to to any of these uh, questions that we're going to be going to be dealing with. So we're going to be proposing, I presume, we're going to be proposing uh, uh, changes or continuation of the present, um, focusing on outcomes to um, that will value to the residents of Lawrence, not only now, but in the future. Um, so in part, the, the kind of no best answer to these kinds of questions um, leads, us, leads me to contrast our work with the work of a formal advisory board, uh, like the Planning Commission, um, um, where the staff will bring to the advisory committee proposals or recommendations. I don't see that happening here. Uh, I see us um, doing some homework, relying on Craig and his, his network and the network that others of us, of us have um, to, uh, to come up with uh, the proposals that we can hopefully agree upon. And I think one of the things I really want to make sure of is that um, we understand that these issues, we keep in mind that these issues have been addressed nationally, not by the national government, by all kinds of local governments nationally. So there's all kinds of resources that we should be able to draw upon if we, if we choose uh, to do so. So um, Craig's experiences and his network can kind of keep us on track if we're if we're off if we're off track. But you know, it was interesting the other day. I asked. Uh, I was on a call with a bunch of uh, about five former city managers. I said, "Hey, you know, we're lo looking to we're thinking about a direct election of mayors. What do you guys think?" Oh my gosh, you know, got those we got responses right away. So. Um, we have access to both elected officials and professionals throughout the country, so we'll try to rely upon that. Before we go to the, the first set of introductions, uh, Kyle has a few things that he would like to say to get us started. Thank you very much. My name is Kyle Kobe. I'm with the Planning Department. I'll be helping facilitate the Zoom video portion of the meeting. Joining via remote video is Craig Owens, City Manager, and Tony Wheeler, City Attorney. We'll work alongside the chair who's on remote video to facilitate the meeting proceedings. This meeting is being recorded and broadcast live on the city's YouTube channel and public access cable channel 25. During the meeting, please mute yourself by clicking on the microphone icon found in the lower left hand corner of the Zoom menu next to the video icon. When you are muted, a red line will appear over the icon. This will make it easier for everybody to hear the meeting. Just remember to unmute if and when you want to speak. You can also turn your video camera on or off by clicking the video icon in the menu. For the purposes of this public meeting, please leave your video on for the duration. If you're participating by phone, you can enter star six to mute and unmute yourself. 
So more on your Zoom screen, you will also see a choice to toggle between speaker and gallery view. Speaker view shows the active speaker. Gallery view tiles all the meeting participants. Members of the task force, you must state your name and title each time you speak. Members of city staff must also state their name and title each time they speak. I'll also ask members of the public identify themselves each time before they speak to ensure that everyone is able to follow along. When public comment is opened, individuals participating via Zoom should use the raise your hand feature. Windows and Mac users can access this feature through the participants button at the bottom of their screen. Android and iPhone users can access this feature through the more button located at the bottom right hand corner of their screen. For those calling in by phone, you may dial star nine. Individuals will be called upon by name in the order they appear on the meeting host screen. When you're called on, please unmute your listening device and state your name before speaking. Chair will then call for in-person public comment for those who are physically present. Staff will direct you to the podium to speak while following social distancing and safety protocols. I want to again remind everyone to please mute yourself when you're not speaking, and I'll now turn the meeting, turn the meeting back over to the chair. Well, thank you. Are there any uh, any questions for Kyle before we get started here? Okay, then um, let's do introductions, and I will start. And questions are your name, what you're doing these days, your present previous involvement in community affairs organizations, and why you think you were selected as a task force member. So I will get started, and then we can just go around the go around the circle. So what do you do, um, John? Now, Bandian, what are you doing these days? I have to look at my notes to see what I'm doing. I hope you don't don't mind. Um, when you get my age, you just you know whatever. Uh, so retired uh, retired prof with the public administration department um, came here since in 1976. So um, been with the university for quite a while. Um, my focus has been on local government and human resources management. Uh, present and previous involvement, I was on the city commission for eight years. I was a mayor uh, for one year during both of those, both of those terms. Um, I've been on the library board, the Willow board. I'm presently on Watkins board and Parks and Recreation advisory board. Why do I think I was selected as a task force member? Uh, probably because of my experience in local government and my knowledge of forms of forms of government and length of time I was a resident. And also maybe because I'm now um, part of a task force for the National Civic League that's rewriting its model cities charter. So I'm involved in that and we may be able to take advantage of some of that, some of that information as well. Okay, let's see. I'm just going to call on people if that's okay with you guys. And if it isn't, that's too bad. Uh, Jim, let's start with you, Jim Carpenter. All right, Jim Carpenter, <clears throat> been in Lawrence residence since 1992. Um, currently an attorney, solo practitioner, mostly right now um, doing, representing people facing involuntary commitment, probate work adoptions, representing kids that are in foster care. Um, but I've done a little bit of everything over the years. Uh, starting in 1994, I was on an officer in the Barker Neighborhood Association, secretary, vice president, president. Um, I was up till through 2001, 2000 to 2005. I was the Barker representative to the Lawrence Association of Neighborhoods. I was the Barker representative to the Burroughs Creek Trail Task Force, did a oh, yeah. trail, um, <clears throat> ran for city commission in 2015. Um, 2015 to 2011, I had six years on the Board of Zoning Appeals for the city of Lawrence. Um, currently on the Planning Commission, started in January of 2016. So I'm starting my in my fifth year. I still got two to go because I was appointed to fill an unexpired term. Um, hmm. I was one of the founding board members of the Americana Music Academy, and for now I'm going in my fourth year as a civilian emergency response team volunteer with Douglas County Emergency Management. So 
that's kind of <clears throat> my involvement. And um, why do I think I've been chosen? I think because of all that. <laughs> <laughs> that's great, Jim. I'm going to try not to be intimidated by the rest of you as you as you do this, and uh, we'll uh, we'll we'll see, huh? Rachel, can we go to you next? Hi, I'm Rachel Reed. I, uh, I'm retired uh, just as of uh, January 30th. I had a career in the Army, and then uh, I taught at Haskell Indian Nations University. And then uh, I worked in educational research at the Command and General Staff College at Fort Leavenworth. Um, I'm rather outspoken, as some of you may have seen on the, uh, um, I occasionally post things on Twitter and Facebook that, uh, I'm, I'll tone down for the, uh, duration of the, uh, task force. Um, <laughs> I'm, uh, a member of the uh, Breezedale Neighborhood Association. Um, I wouldn't say board of directors. We aren't quite that formal. Um, my name is on the blame line for a couple of things. I found out that I was uh, listed as president one day uh, when they needed to talk to the president of the Neighborhood Association. Um, let's see, what else? I uh, I design web pages a um, little bit out of practice because of the uh, um, work I did at the Command and General Staff College. Um, I I have taught over uh, um, over video uh, distance education and. Um, um, my wife and I collect art. My wife makes stained glass. Um, let's see what else. Uh, why do you think you were? Why do you think you were selected? I was selected because um, I uh, talked with Courtney on the city commission. I raised my hand and said, uh, "I want to be on the, the task force. I I think I've got something that that I could add to it because." I know changes need to be made. And I think this, this commission will help us decide the changes. Okay. And uh, I kept pestering her and pestering her. And Courtney finally said, okay, okay, shut up. You're, I'll, I'll put your name in. Okay. And, uh, Thank so you. That's it. Thank you. Dustin? Hello, uh, I'm Dustin Stumbling Bear, and I have just been hanging out this past year for obvious reasons. And I'm just reading up, doing a lot of stuff uh, for myself. I actually started um, reaching out to individuals across the Lawrence community, trying to create a citizens group to get this issue on the ballot in November of this year. So when I saw this committee being formed, I put that on pause and put my name into the commissioners to be chosen. Part of the, one of the reasons I think I was chosen was four years ago, I ran for the Lawrence City Commission and I engaged uh, the community in a very unique way. Yeah, door knocking was my main theme. We knocked over 11,500 doors in six months and talked to over 8,500 people. And this particular issue came up with about 2,000 plus people. So it's something that I've been thinking about for a couple of years, the community has been thinking about for a while, and I just wanted to make sure their voices were heard when we're discussing these issues. So that's pretty much all I got. Okay, thank you, Dustin. Eileen? Sure, hi everybody, my name's Eileen Horn. Uh, currently I'm working in food policy consulting, so I'm doing health and agriculture uh, policy consulting, but. Um, previously, I served as the sustainability director for the city of Lawrence and Douglas County. So I worked in city and county government for seven years and um, just recently retired from a three-year stint in the Kansas legislature in the House of Representatives. 
Um, and I've served on a, a, a couple boards around town and have really um, enjoyed that service. Most recently, the Lawrence Community Shelter um, Board. So um, <laughs> I'm not really sure why I got named, except that when uh, Lisa Larson and I ran into each other, I told her how excited I was that this was happening. And I think that was just enough. So um, I'm really excited to be here. I, I think this is a really important topic for our community to tackle. And I'm thrilled that the commission is stepping up to start the conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Eileen. Uh, Sammy. Hi, y'all. Um, my name is Sammy Turner. Um, I use she, her pronouns. Um, I recently graduated from Lawrence High School last spring um, and I'm currently on a gap year before going to college next year. Um, currently, I'm working in the Kansas State Legislature for Representative Christina Haswood, who took over Eileen's seat. Um, and I also work for Representative Joella Hoy, who um, lives in Lenexa. I've uh, worked on various uh, state and local campaigns um, and founded the Kansas High School Democrats about a year and a half ago. Um, and so throughout the past few years, I've mainly been doing a lot of organizing um, in high schools across the, the state um, for various issues, whether, you know, that's like broader civic engagement, voter registration stuff, or advocating for different uh, school safety measures or things like that. Um, and so I wanted to be a part of this commission because I wanted to make sure there was some sort of youth representation um, on this. Um, I currently plan to be a lifelong resident of Lawrence. Um, my family has been here for pretty long time. My grandma, um, her family even worked on the farm that used to be Bauer Farm that Free State's built on. Um, so we've been here for a little while. Um, so, you know, I figured the structure of our city government uh, will have a great effect on how our city functions in the future. And I wanted to be a part of that conversation. So, yeah, I'm excited to um, hear y'all's perspectives and uh, work on this project together with you. Okay. Thank you, Sammy. Ursula? You're muted, Ursula. Hello, I'm Ursula Minor. I'm a lifelong Lawrence resident. My family's been here for an extremely long time. I am president of the Lawrence branch in the ACP. I have been for over 15 years. And as a branch, we're very involved in the community and collaborating with other organizations. Um, we work on voter education, all just lots of things, too many things to mention. I'm chair of the Lawrence Public Library. I am on the Lawrence Memorial Hospital Diversity and Inclusion Board. I'm a 3D mixed media artist and I work at Honeywell International. I've actually been there 43 years, um, long time. Um, so I, I am very involved in the community and I like to be involved because I feel like, you know, you. If you live in your community, you should be involved and have a say over what's going on and, you know, put your voice in there to if you don't like the way something's going or you like the way it's going, I think you just need to be involved. Um, I think I may have um, been asked just because I am involved in the community and I and I do care about what happens in Lawrence. Thank you, Ursula. Uh, John. All right. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. My name is John Wilson. <clears throat> and uh, what I'm doing these days, I am um, been doing a lot of sitting in this basement closet uh, since last March, doing hours of Zoom meetings a day uh, as president and CEO of Kansas Action for Children, which is a children's advocacy organization, and also um, just being a proud dad uh, of two kids who have been uh, really resilient during this pandemic of, of doing childcare at home and also virtual learning from home. Uh, alongside my wife, Jamie. Uh, so I've, I've kind of dabbled in a lot of things in Lawrence. I, um, like, rep, like Eileen, I was a representative for a few years representing the 10th House District uh, in the Kansas legislature from my first session was 2013 and I stepped down in 2017 to join Kansas Action for Children. Um, I've also served on the board of, of ECM and I've been the moderator at Plymouth Church and been on the board of the Douglas County Historical Society, was one of the original members of the Douglas County Food Policy Council. And, um, and yeah, I have been in Lawrence really uh, for the most part since I graduated from 
KU and uh, since I attended KU from 2002 to 2006, where I studied design and visual communication. And I like to think that maybe the way that I think about problems is one of the reasons I'm on this task force of, of kind of thinking about uh, what could be. And um, also I have a fairly even keeled temper, which generally is a pretty good disposition for uh, groups like this. And, and I think, and I would hope also that I have a, uh, that, that I was selected because of my uh, commitment to advancing racial equity. And I think that will show up in this work. And if it doesn't, I will do what I can to, uh, to make it show up. Um, and I am just personally interested in this issue because as I've been able to travel around the country through my work, many of the cities that I'm fond of as kind of a young professional, I think have a form of governance, governance that lends itself to the things that make it a really interesting place. Places like Denver or Boise, or um, uh, I don't know, to a degree Portland. Uh, so I'm just really excited to dig into this. Um, and I think the last thing I'll say is that um, I think Lawrence has a lot to be proud of. And yet I also recognize that it feels to me, it feels like we've kind of plateaued a bit. And I think this is a type of conversation that can spur us in the right direction so that we aren't outpaced certainly by other um, states or cities in other states, but even st cities in Kansas. I'm really glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, Pew. Hi, good evening, everybody. I'm Hugh Carter. I'm the uh, Vice President of External Affairs at the Chamber of Commerce in Lawrence, and that position is largely government relations, occasional special projects. I uh, spent about a year focused on getting uh, Peasley Tech up and going um, in my current position at the Chamber. And Currently involved in, from board standpoint, uh, spent many years on the uh, Boys and Girls Club Board of Directors. I'm currently on the uh, Lawrence Schools Foundation Board, uh, Explore Lawrence Board, the Health Department Board, and I'm on the state uh, local area two workforce board. We oversee the uh, WIOA funds for 18 counties in uh, um, in Kansas. Uh, served. Uh, I was a leadership Lawrence uh, graduate and then served as a Lawrence Douglas County Planning Commissioner and then was ele elected to the Lawrence City Commission for a two year term. And I did not run again when I took a job, this current job with the, the chamber, which has been uh, about eight years ago. So um, I'm a Lawrence native. I think I already said that, but the, the reason I think I was uh, appointed was a couple of things that just that experience, I've kind of been in the middle of it, and my, my job at the chamber has kept me in the middle of some of this for the, for the last decade or so, um, but also uh, looking for the business community's perspective on, um, on some of these changes. So I'll, I'll try and uh, reach out to our chamber membership and be able to come here as educated as I can with some other folks' point, points of view. So thank you. Really honored to be here. Thanks, you. Uh, Bonnie? Oh, hello, everybody. Um, I'm Bonnie Johnson. Um, I am a planning professor, urban planning professor at the University of Kansas right at the moment. I came to Lawrence in uh, 1985 as a uh, student um, and uh, got degrees in political science, Latin American studies, and um, master's degree in urban planning and then uh, and then went off and was a city planner for eight years for a couple of different cities in Texas and uh, Kansas and Missouri and uh, a couple of different counties and then came back to school and got my PhD in political science slash public administration. I have had um, Professor Nalbandian and Professor Loomis as professors. Um, I have uh, been a professor at KU since 2005. Um, I have uh, been president of the Indian Hills Neighborhood Association for about six years. I've been also a member of the Lawrence Douglas County Metropolitan Planning Commission um, and 
presently a, an election worker for the, the county. And uh, why do I think I was selected? Well, a couple of years ago, I guess it was five years ago, I have a class that I teach that's politics, planning, and administration. And we did a class project where we had a uh, community workshop on uh, should Lawrence uh, consider changing their form of government? Um, and then I had another class, the same class in 2018, they did posters on what difference form of government makes uh, that they showed at the Lawrence Public Library. And so when this came up, I contacted Stuart Bowley, who had come to the workshop we had at the Visitor Center and said, uh, if you know, if I can be of help, let me know. And he um, put my name in and here I am. Thank you. Thank you, Bonnie. Uh, Craig? Well, good evening. Uh, good to see everybody. My name is Craig Owens. I um, have the pleasure of serving as the Lawrence City Manager for about the last 19 months. Uh, more months in lockdown than live, but um, I was pleased to meet with many of you in person before uh, that and, and virtually with most of you um, since then, if I didn't catch you uh, in person before that. But um, really excited and interested in this subject, um, you know, academically, obviously, but I've also experienced um, nuances of the council manager form of government and um, uh, look forward to not just hearing and understanding uh, the perspectives from this uh, group, but also um, kind of lending what happens when uh, uh, these different uh, scenarios play out, which is is interesting, has been interesting in my career. Uh, so I've been at it uh, almost 30 years. Um, and um, I have to mention, because I just think this is the neatest thing. I, I went to Knox College and I was coached by somebody who was coached on this call. Uh, uh, Burdett Loomis uh, was a soccer coach there. So I always think that that's so cool. Um, <laughs> but uh, after that, then I came here to graduate school at the University of Kansas in public administration. And I believe my second professor was Dr. Nalbandian and, uh, and the rest was a series of steps uh, throughout the, uh, the middle of the country from Chicago to Texas, uh, quite a bit of time, multiple stops in the St. Louis area, and then really proud to be back here in Lawrence. Thanks, Craig. Um, okay, Bird. Okay, well, first of all, the, my 1978 team at Knox was inducted into the Knox College Athletic Hall of Fame two years ago. It's the only athletic hall of fame I'm ever getting into. Um, <laughs> so uh, I'm Bird Loomis, uh, Burdett Loomis. Uh, I've been here since 1979. Uh, I studied mostly Congress and uh, interest groups. Um, and I'm pretty much a political institutions person uh, along those lines, political parties probably as, as, as well. Um, I've uh, done a variety of things within the Lawrence uh, uh, community. Uh, I've been on the social service board. Um, over 30 years ago, I was head of something called the Downtown Improvement Committee. Uh, after an election turmoil over the downtown and a mall downtown, uh, right. we didn't accomplish we didn't accomplish anything positive, but there was a negative result that was good. We kept a a, a cornfield mall out of, out of out of Lawrence. I was on the Ninth Street uh, Art Project Board, um, and that has really uh, affected my uh, approach to this this uh this subject because i think that that was a great missed opportunity for lawrence uh that i think a stronger mayor would have guided through uh particularly if he or she was was a skilled facilitator and and so i think we're missing opportunities I'll, i would build a little bit on what john said in terms of things we could be doing that may, may uh, escape us 
I, I do a lot of art. I've been on the Spen I'm on now on the Spencer National Advisory Board. Um, I was a longtime treasurer uh, of Old West Lawrence. Uh, worked for Kathleen Sebelius for a year in um, in Topeka, learning uh, that I was well. I may be a reasonably good academic. I'm a a terrible staff member. Um, and <laughs> Uh, why I'm on this, uh, on this, uh, 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 group, uh, I've written a couple of editorials over the years for the uh, Lawrence Journal World. I write a lot of stuff that appears in papers around the state, along with some colleagues, political science colleagues. Um, and when I saw that this, and I, I have, uh, conversed with uh, the city manager, with John and some others about this. Uh, I'm pretty much a, a, a long time advocate for a uh, elected mayor. And uh, when I saw the newspaper that this committee was uh, setting up, I emailed all five commissioners. Uh, Brad Fickle died, immediately got back to me, said, uh, you're on the committee. And that's that. Okay, Bird, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Let's see, I think we got everybody. Um, our next item is uh, to talk about the uh, Open Meetings Act. So Tony, um, you wanna do that for us? Yes, good evening. Tony Wheeler, city attorney. Um, thanks very much. It's, uh, I'm really impressed with everyone's background and your commitments to the community. So um, I'm really happy to be a, a resource for this board or this task force going forward. One of my first tasks is to talk to you tonight about the Kansas Open Meetings Act. But I recognize so many familiar faces from people who have attended my uh, trainings on this law before. So um, I'm going to give an abbreviated version tonight, but the full packet uh, is in your uh, packet for tonight's meeting. So feel free to go through that. And if you have any questions, I'm always available uh, to talk with you if you have any questions about complying with the Kansas Open Meetings Act. Uh, Jim Carpenter told me before the meeting started that he believes he's sat through 11 coma trainings. So um, I'll try to keep this brief, but hit the highlights. So this city government task force is a covered entity under the Kansas Open Meetings Act because it uh, is an advisory board to the commission and it is supported by public funds. So the, um, the law, the coma law applies when there is a meeting of this task force. And in order for there to be a meeting, the three elements on this screen that you see um, have to be present. First, there has to be a gathering of a majority of the members of the body. And for this 11 member task force, that magic number is six. There has to be an interactive communication of, the, of six task force members and the members have to be discussing the business of this task force. So before we move on, I wanna talk a little bit about that interactive communication piece. Um, I just wanna elaborate on that a little bit. Obviously it applies when you are uh, in the physical presence of one another and exchanging ideas and talking, but it also applies to phone calls, conference calls, video conferencing like tonight's meeting, and even to um, possibly to social media platforms when there's an opportunity for an interactive discussion. I wanna make you aware that recently in 2020, the Kansas Attorney General found that a governing body had violated the Open Meetings Act when a majority of that governing body posted um, back and forth on Facebook. Uh, they were not engaged, they were engaged in discussing the business of their governing body. And even though they hadn't taken a formal vote, just the discussion was what triggered the um, coma violation. So I ask you to please um, exercise caution when you're posting on Facebook or other social media sites with when other members of this task force are also on the same site and you're discussing or commenting about matters before this task force. Those um, could implicate the Kansas Open Meetings Act. Similarly, I ask you to be careful about your email communications. If a majority of the task force, again, that's six, if six of you use email to engage in interactive discussions, that contact could also raise a uh, Kansas Open Meetings Act issue. So please uh, avoid initiating an online discussion with your fellow task force members through email. If you have something that you want to relay, 
to the full commission, I would ask you to contact Dr. Nalbandian or Craig Owens directly, and they can help facilitate a communication that complies with the law. Finally, I just wanna to touch on what is called serial meetings. The law prohibits um, serial meetings, and that is a group of smaller meetings, uh, say there's two, two or three of you that are discussing an item, and then you, ha um, you have a series of meetings until six people have been involved. You cannot avoid the requirements of the Kansas Open Meetings Act by having a series of smaller meetings. So I'd ask you to be, to be cognizant of that and careful. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to give me a call. So just in summary, the Kansas Open Meetings Act applies um, when there is a meeting and it's those three elements that are on the, the board there. If those elements are present, then um, we do have to follow the requirements of the law. And those include making sure that the meeting is open to the public. That means it needs to be held in a, in a manner that the public can participate or can observe what is happening. So um, it has to be either held at a place that is accessible to the public or in this virtual setting uh, in a way that the public has an opportunity to observe and hear your deliberations. Secondly, notice has to be given to any person uh, who has requested notice of the task force meetings. There can be violations for, violate, for um, violating this law. The attorney general has said that his main goal is to ensure compliance. So um, uh, penalties are not normally assessed, but they can be assessed. He often will um, direct people to engage or have additional training if there is a violation. But probably the most serious thing that results from an open meetings violation is a loss of public trust. So I just ask you to please keep this law in mind. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me or to Craig Owens, and we will try to give you our, our best guidance to ensure compliance. So uh, good luck to you and uh, thank you for allowing me to speak on this. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to take them now, or you are welcome to reach me you know, anytime in the future. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Tony. Um, I do have a question, and maybe if others of you have questions as well. Um, I understand that if I want to, as chair, if I want to communicate with everybody, that I would send my, um, my communication to Bobby, and then Bobby can distribute it uh, for me. Um, if I want to communicate with one or two people, as long as it doesn't turn into a serial communication that involves more than uh, or six or more, is that is that okay as well? Yes, that is permiss that is permissible um, to have an exchange. Um, with you know one or two people on the board, as long as you stay under that uh, six, that six okay. number. And as long as we don't then say, okay, well, I'll talk to so and so, and I'll talk to so and that kind of thing. Exactly. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, anybody else with um, with questions? Yeah, Rachel, you're muted. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, should be unmuted now. Yeah. Uh, Tony, if my neighborhood wants to get together and find out what's going on um, with the meetings, is that permissible? I'm the only one in the neighborhood who's, or they want to provide information or feedback for me to bring back to the committee. Um, is that permissible under the coma? Tony Wheeler, city attorney. Yes, you may share information with your um, your groups and you may take back information. Uh, it's just important to remember that um, that neighborhood association board meeting, if, if six or more members of this task force were to participate or engage in those discussions, that's when that law applies. But if there's a single person uh, like yourself uh, that wants to communicate with an advisory board, or a neighborhood association or some other group, that is certainly acceptable. Um, of course, they are always welcome to attend the public meeting and give information directly. And um, we can certainly 
uh, send notice of meetings to them if they contact Bobby Walthall and the city manager's office. But yes, individual task force members can be a, sort of a conduit of information if, if that's desired, as long as it involves fewer than six of you. Is that, is that helpful? Fewer than six of the members of the task force. Correct, yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, good. Then um, let's move on uh, to the next agenda item, which is the, uh, let's see if I had my agenda in front of me, it'd help. Um, it's going to be the, uh, the charge, the charge that we have. So um, I have the resolution in front of me, and you've all seen the resolution. Uh, this is on page two, and I, I want to emphasize a couple of things here. Um, first of all, I think th the commission has made clear that we are not talking about fundamentally changing the form of government. So we are still, we, we are working within the boundaries of our present uh, structure which is, uh, like I said before uh, in, our, in my memo, nationally is referred to as council manager government. Here in Kansas, it's commission, commission manager. And I wanna reiterate what, those, what, what the, difference, the difference is, um, because particularly like, um, like Eileen or the others of you who have uh, experience in the state legislature, you know, you, you've seen a separation of powers. And of course, that's very different than what we have here in Lawrence. So here, here are the, the, the constraints. Um, let's see, first, and I'm reading uh, here now, the, um, the council commission manager form of government places governmental authority in the collective leadership body of the council or the commission. So the commission is the ultimate decider here, okay? Um, a mayor who may be elected at large by residents is a member of the governing body. So th the mayor is not, does not have separate um, executive authority as the governor would have or as the president would have that's not the way it works here. The mayor is a member of the governing body. Now, whether the, whether, whether the mayor votes <laughs> or, or uh, votes in, along with the others, or whether the mayor only votes to break a tie, I mean, those are kinds of things that we can, we can talk about. Um, the, second, the second feature, is that the executive and administrative functions of the city government are the responsibility of the professional city manager. Okay, that's Craig, who is appointed by and is formally responsible to the governing body as a whole. All right, this is, this is, this is very important. So no matter what we do in terms of how we are electing a mayor and what that term of office yeah. might be, the mayor does not have authority over the city manager. The mayor is a member of the governing body and the governing body is responsible. And, and Craig actually works at the pleasure of the governing body, not the mayor. If we said in our recommendation, the city manager should report to the mayor, we would in effect be saying, we wanna change our form of government fundamentally. So that's not that's not what we're doing. Um, so in addition, uh, what we are going to be looking at specifically is how to elect a nonpartisan mayor. All right. And uh, second, this whole business of at-large versus district elections, or some combination of of the two. Now this is going to be this is real tricky because. Um, as some of you know, no matter what we recommend and no matter what is decided, 
it will have positive consequences and some people would say negative consequences, okay? So the more discrete districts we have, for example, the harder it's gonna to be to look at the bigger picture. The more, the more we have looking at the bigger picture, some of the, some of the pockets of interest get um, ignored. So there is no one best way, one best way to, to do this. Um, okay, so, and we have until July 1. Uh, to to do this, and we'll have to figure out how we're going to go about our business because I haven't laid out a a plan for a plan for that. So let's get to know each other a little better with regard to these um, to these particular to these particular issue. The mayor, how we're electing a mayor or district and at large. So uh, we'll go we'll go um, we'll go around uh, as we did before. And um, we have the four uh, bullet points. Identify a particular issue, if any, that you might be interested in. Briefly share any points of view you have on one or more of the issues we are charged with reviewing. You're not trying to persuade at this point. You're just, we're just trying to find out where people are coming from. I hope that makes sense. Any informal constituency uh, you may be representing or who residents think you represent, okay? And then your knowledge base about form of government, that, would, that, that, could, that could help as well. So uh, let me start again, and then Jim will go to you next. So uh, you might be prepared for that. Um, the only, the issue, as I said in, one of my, in my earlier um, email, I'm more, I'm, I see myself more as a facilitator of the process rather than an advocate for anything in, anything in particular. Um, I, do, I do feel that uh, a um, directly elected mayor uh, would be of some, of some advantage uh, just in terms of continuity in office. I think that's a very important, very important piece. Um, and then there's a couple of other uh, issues, uh, uh, a couple of other points about that as well. Um, I don't think I'm representing a constituency. Um, I have a considerable knowledge about uh, forms of government. Um, in fact, do workshops on the topic. So, okay. So uh, Jim, you wanna go next? Jim Carpenter, task force. Task force. Uh, yeah, that's a, a tough bundle of topics here. As far as the mayor, I'm really interested in a direct election of the mayor, but trying to also flesh out what kind of duties and responsibilities that would be if we do it that way, have a longer term mayor. I think having a longer term mayor would have a lot of advantages. We've seen that with a lot of things that have come up every two years, we get a new commission and every year we have a new mayor and things change so quickly here. It would be helpful to have somebody that's got their eye on the bigger picture and the longer term. Uh, one of the things that struck me about, you know, having that mayor is appointment power to boards and commissions because generally in Lawrence, the mayor chooses those that serves on the boards and commissions for their, their, their term. I could see a problem if we have you know, a mayor that's for four years or so that's making all those appointments. So I would like that we would have a discussion about do we rotate appointment power or get stage with the mayor. Um, between districts and at large, I've thought about that a lot over the years and I can see the pros and cons of that and I'm sure we're going to hear a lot of that and that really comes down to how we decide if we go with districts how those are drawn are they fair and equitable but to me the importance of possibly having districts is to increase uh, citizen participation and in investment in our local government we have a pretty good voter turnout but if you look at it by precincts, it's kind of spotty across town. 
And you have to wonder sometimes, um, is that because they don't feel that they're actually represented so they don't vote? So I have to say, that's, that's one of the things I've done after every election is kind of look at how the votes have come in from around the town. Um, my background in forms of government, I've had some classes in grad school, but haven't really used it other than observing our form of government and what Lawrence has done over the last 30 years of being here and being involved with multiple commission campaigns and my own and having thoughts from being on various boards and such about citizen participation mostly. I think we need to have a way that we increase uh, the diversity of those that are involved and really the buy-in of the citizens because we, that kind of ebbs and flows if you if you listen to um, comments at city commission meetings and that. And I, I just say it's interesting that we're doing this at the same time. There's a presentation coming up at the Douglas County Commission about whether they're going to ex expand the number of county commissioners. So it's this isn't just just the city. I think the whole county is is looking at shaking things up a little bit. So I'm really excited about where this might go. <clears throat> okay, thank you, Jim. Uh, Rachel, will you be next, please? There, that's better. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I don't represent directly any constituency. I am a member of the Breezedale Neighborhood Association. Um, looking at at how I feel we could change things. I, I feel we do need an elected mayor, like Jim said, for continuity, perhaps you know, beyond two years, perhaps four years. Um, I don't think um, that we need to have um districts or wards uh i feel that the at large um elections that we have at this point in time um uh, in my opinion they work um the uh if we had districts or wards then we would have to uh, develop a means to draw the lines and it would become politicized, <laughs> which I really don't think we want to go there. Um, it, 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 it just leaves a bad taste in my mouth thinking about that. Okay. Um, perhaps a, an even number of uh, city commissioners with the mayor um, being a um, a fifth or a seventh member of the city commission as a tiebreaker if there were any votes. Um, but uh, um, you know, we need to have a, a mayor for an extended period of time. I don't think we need wards or districts. Um, at large, in my opinion, works fine. Okay. Um, Thank you, Rachel. So, That's good. Thank you very yeah. much. Appreciate You're welcome. I, I I do apologize. I have a tendency to ramble and go on. Well, so. well then then I'll apologize for cutting you off from time to time. <laughs> uh, Dustin. Hi, Dustin Stumlingbear. And for me, I I am interested in having a strong mayor for as many of the same reasons as other people so that there's consistency in uh, representation for our community to other communities and for special interests. Uh, also the ability to have a consistent message to the city from City Hall. And I also feel that it could help um, for representation of different kinds of people for the options that would be available to the community for someone running for mayor if it's a single slot. I 
initially was against city commission districts, but after having run for office and talked to so many people who feel that a commission district would better serve them, I have slightly changed my position. And over the last three years, as part of getting ready for what I was going to do this year and getting a community uh, led effort to have this change put on the ballot, I've spent the last three years not only researching these different forms of government, the different ways they've changed, but also voter turnout to see how what kind of increase or decrease there was in communities that have changed. And I've reached out to some commissioners slash uh, ward leaders and city managers and other cities that have changed in the last 10 years. She got to just kind of get an idea of how it worked out for them. And that is all I have for now. I, I, Dustin, at some point, um, would you consider sharing your research findings? Yeah, I, yeah, I can. I, how would I do that, by the way? I, that was something I was wondering if we wanted to share documents. Oh, would we do that yeah. through each other or once again, go through Bobby Waffle? Yeah, you'd probably you'd probably want to go through Bobby on something like that. Okay, then I can put that together and get it sent out to her soon. Sure. Okay. And as a matter of fact, I mean, might as well say this now. Uh, in the beginning, if anybody has written document that they would like to share, then um, send it to send send it to Bobby, and then I'll ask Bobby to send them to me. <laughs> Okay, and then I'll sort through them and uh, and and try to pull some things together and get them back to you. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, so um, I guess Eileen. Thanks. Um, so I'm being honest here. I have more questions than than answers, and I don't have any strong positions really on any of these issues. I think. What's driving my participation in this task force and what I'd like to see um, considered as we discuss are kind of core values around how do we how do we engage voters? How do we provide fair representation for citizens and make sure that we're hearing from, from all the voices in our community? Um, I'm also really interested in the terms of commissioners so that we can uh, so we can attract a variety of public servants. I'm really curious about what strategies help people of all different ages and backgrounds and um, and demographics to be encouraged to participate. Um, and also I think that whatever we do, I want to I want to keep in mind that Lawrence isn't great at civil discourse, especially at the commission levels at times. <laughs> and I would really like to see us uh, build a structure that maybe that maybe helps mitigate that in some way. So, I mean, I don't have an answer of what the structure should look like. Um, I also have my girl She's not very happy. Um, but yeah, those are the core values I would be interested in focusing on. <laughs> okay, Eileen, thank you very much. Um, Eileen, the, uh, those questions that you had, the three or four questions that you could you send those to me? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Yeah. I'd be happy to. Might be useful to share. Uh, Sammy? Hi, uh, this is Sammy Turner. Um, I don't represent any uh, particular constituency group um, and don't have a super strong opinion on uh, whether we directly elect the mayor or not. Um, I would say I currently am in favor of having districts um, for our commissioners. Um, I would like to see, you know, how we can engage um, a broader variety of our um, city uh, and see how we can get people, not just from like the central area of our town, but more of the other edges of, of Lawrence involved in our um, local government and people of, you know, all backgrounds, ages, et cetera, um, involved. Um, I would say, uh, wait, what was the other question? Um. Uh, just let's see, uh, do you represent a constituency and your knowledge base of forms of government? Oh, yeah, I would say I have, um, I'm not an expert, so I'm excited to hear uh, your all's expertise on these areas. Um, I'd say I know like the basic backgrounds of, you know, different 
local governments uh, in like Northeastern Kansas, um, like Overland Park, Shawnee and Lenexa, um, their sort of ward system um, of government. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I need to make a, a note here. Hang on for a minute. Um, Bird and Dustin. Okay, uh, John. All right, John Wilson. And in terms of, um, I, I really, a lot of the comments that have already been shared resonate with me. I, I think having the uh, strong mayor independently elected allows for consistency, but not just in my mind, the idea of somebody who can set a vision for residents of Lawrence, but, but the consistency in community collaborations with chamber, with neighborhood associations so that you can really set a vision, run on a vision, and then um, work towards that vision becoming a reality. And we know that it takes longer than what I think feels like the musical chairs term that our current mayoral system feels like. Um, but, and similar to Eileen, I, I'm, I, I want to do a lot of learning. I don't have any strongly held opinions on, on the, the position or on the situation other than what I've already shared. And even those aren't super strong. Um, and I, I don't have any formal constituency informally. I mean, I, I think as a 37 year old parent of two small children, I want this community to be a place that attracts um, all types of families, all types of individuals who can see themselves here. And I think our form of government and who are in those positions can help do that and make it a place where uh, families like mine can stay um, and thrive. Um, and then my knowledge base for the, for the form of government, my, my closest experience is very familiar with frustrating forms of government, having served in the legislature when I was in the radical minority. So that's about it. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Okay, let's see, where are we, Hugh? Sorry, uh, Hugh Carter, task force member. So um, yeah, I'm also, uh, interested in seeing us move towards a, a directly elected mayor. All the reasons I think have been covered. The only one I might add to that is just accountability. Um, the ability to, to do a little longer range planning, uh, envisioning um, without worrying about the consequences of the, of the next election. That's probably, you know, it feels like half the time we're already in the middle of a campaign. So very difficult to stick to a plan. Um, and as far as the uh, you know districts uh, versus at large, uh, I I have I guess a few opinions. I see advantages and disadvantages, but I believe I also there are many more advantages and disadvantages that I'm not aware of. I'm not an expert in this, so I'm very open and, and looking forward to learning more about about that because I I think if I were given the opportunity, um, I'm I would lean toward districts right now, but. Um, that's based on, I think, fairly limited knowledge. Um, and my knowledge base comes from really, uh, obviously, I know Lawrence very well in our system, but I did in my previous career, I opened hotels and conference centers. And so I did that in uh, nine different states and oftentimes was working directly with city and, and other folks. And I, I did feel a little difference at times and, and you could sense which form of government you were dealing with even at times. So, okay but not a great in-depth in knowledge. I'm looking forward to learning a lot more on that. Okay, thanks, you. Um, I did want to say um, that um, I think um, putting Loomis on alert here, that a district versus at large, I think Bird probably has as much to, uh, to tell us about that pros and cons, as well as Craig. Craig, you've worked, you've probably worked in, uh, in in cities where they have where you've done both right this is my first all at large oh okay all right good so we'll be able to we'll be able to check that out bonnie your turn okay i'm bonnie johnson task force member and um identify a particular issue if any you may be interested in um i think the the issue of the long term thinking and um, the consistent message and accountability I think those are things that have been mentioned as as values that I'm interested in and 
there are so many different variables to form of government that you can tinker with that I think that um, Eileen and, and, and Hugh and kind of honing in on kind of values you're interested in is going to be really important because you can, you can um, mess around with um, how the council members are elected. Are they elected all at once or they have staggered terms? Um, you can have district elections for the council at large. You can have a mixture where some are elected from districts and some are elected at large. Um, length of term, when elections are, term limits. The mayor, do they even have the power to vote or do they just break ties? Do they have a veto power? Do they uh, do a state of the city address? Do they put forward a legislative agenda? Uh, appointments, um, uh, initiating or having a role in the budget. I mean, there's it, it, the list of the things that we could tinker with is very long. Um, so I think keeping our eyes on what it is that we think that our, our values that we're wanting to promote will really um, come in handy. Um, and then any uh, informal constituency. I mean, I, I was, um, I have the distinction of being the last elected president of the Indian Hills Neighborhood Association before it went defunct. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, the, the group that I was involved with is, is certainly very informal now. Um, so, so uh, take that for what it's worth. And so my knowledge base about forms of government, I'm, uh, I'm a city planner at heart and I teach urban planning. And so I'm particularly interested in um, urban planning policies and what difference form of government makes to that. Mm -hmm. um, and so for the classes that I've taught uh, about that, include form of government, we've explored uh, what difference it makes for a minority representation, what difference does it make for having getting women to run for office, voter turnout, citizen satisfaction with government, the pros and cons of district elections um, and at-large elections, um, variations in the strength of the mayor, and um, differences in development policy, environmental policy, redistributive policies, budgeting, comprehensive plans, and who runs for office. So um, I've kind of, because of the students gathering all that stuff, I have all sorts of the little tidbits of the research on all of those different things. Oh, that's yeah. that's great, Bonnie. That, so, that's gonna be yeah. pretty helpful. Um, you did talk about, uh, the emphasis on values yeah, and which way. Um, if you have some thoughts about that um, and, and maybe write up a little bit about that and send it to me. Yeah. Um, I'd like to take a look at that along with what Eileen's going to send me. That'd be great. Yeah. Um, let's see, Craig, you want to wait? We, we probably shouldn't have Craig weigh in here. I, I, I don't. Yeah. Let's say let's go to Loomis. So I, I would pick up on on my screen. I've got I've got uh, Eileen right above Bonnie, and Eileen spoke in very general terms about values and stuff. And Bonnie had a laundry list of a million miles long. And I think somehow we're going to have to combine those two those two things. Uh, so I have a few thoughts. Uh, first of all, um, no one is as we've talked a little bit about vision. John did. And other people have a little bit. But I think one of the benefits of an elected mayor is we will have much better political campaigns. If we focus on, on the mayoralty rather than five different people, six different people running for a, com a commission, I think we can have a much better discussion of the issues before the, the, the city. Uh, I, I honestly think that's one of the worst things right now about our system, that we have very poor conversations. Maybe if you're there at the uh, a debate or something, 
you'll you'll see get a better sense of it. But honestly, uh, I don't think it's 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 very good. I think if you have a, an elective mayor, a focal point, you get a better campaign. Uh, and the the major issues rise to rise to the the, the top and and are discussed in 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 uh, more productive ways. I also want to comment on a couple of people saying strong mayor. We're not talking about a strong mayor. We're talking about some kind of medium strong. A strong mayor is a mayor council form of government. And if you look in the literature, that's what you're going to see with a strong. This is not a strong mayor. This is a facilitator. This is someone who is a uh, belongs in the commission in one way or another, as John has talked about, but is wedded to the commission. Uh, and and uh, I think we really need to to bear that in mind, even in the terminology, because once you start looking in the literature for strong mayors, you're going to see something categorically different than we're looking at. Uh, uh, as I, John, would you agree with that? Absolutely. Okay. Um, okay. I, I, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so just just terminology is significant. Now, uh, I think that I'm, I come from the Lord from one of the neighborhoods. Uh, I don't think I represent. Old West Lawrence, or, but I come from a neighborhood perspective, but I think that an elected mayor is going to be very helpful in economic development. And I'm very worried about Lawrence and economic development and putting forward coherent plans. And I, uh, I, it's not the only step we need to take by a long shot, but I think an elected mayor is a good start in terms of selling the city in one way or another, uh, again, with a, with a longer term. Uh, so I, I'm, I think, you know, that's just a value that I have. Um, now, uh, we've gotten through this entire group and we've talked about districts. Uh, we've talked about, uh, about election forms. Um, I want to I want to throw two things in. First of all, I really hate the two year term. Hugh, did you like the two year term? No, I did not. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, nobody likes a two-year term. You're running against other people that you then have to work with. I think there should be six members and two, three year, two, three, elect like three every two years for four years. Uh, I think that's pretty straightforward. And if we had an elective mayor, either that person could regularly have a vote on the commission or would break ties. Uh, but I, I, I really just despise the two-year term. I, I think that <laughs> it is uh, uh, a, a foolish way to go about business. People should serve for four terms. The second and really important thing, and this is going to require some education if we want to do it, is I think we should very, very seriously uh, con consider uh, uh, rank choice voting. And, or the single transferable vote. Uh, both of those are a little technical, but basically it means that you have, for the mayor, you would have ranked choice voting. Uh, you might have several candidates and you vote in an order and the lowest candidate gets eliminated and you go up till you get a majority. It's pretty straightforward. The single transferable vote for uh, commissioners, if you elected three together, uh, you would, you could, you could, you could, you could, there are various ways of doing this. You might have three votes, you might have one vote and you rank. Uh, but the point here is that in the single transferable vote, uh, you can get that minority representation. Uh, it's one of the, one of the great uh, advantages. Uh, it also means that you never waste, you don't waste your vote. You might vote for your first choice. Uh, that first choice doesn't make the the cut your vote then goes to your second choice it's transferred and uh we end up with uh, uh people who are elected with substantial support uh not uh across the community but minorities uh almost always get better representation in that in that format uh and we don't have to do the whole district um uh, at large uh, ex ex exercise. Uh, I, as I said, I think this is going to require a little education. 
uh, but many, many uh, towns, uh, communities are, are going toward ranked choice voting. Uh, and, and so it's, one, it's something I will put on the table uh, and, and something we ought to, cons we, we ought, we ought to, we ought to, con ought to consider um, uh, it as an alternative to this hard edge kind of district versus at large uh, uh, controversy. Uh, I'll stop. I'll stop there, uh, and I will provide some information, John. Write up a, 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 a couple of things with with some references. But I think we have a gr I think we have a great opportunity here to take a knowledge base in, in here in, in Lawrence and really convert it into uh, uh, some kind of, of operation that will help representation, uh, provide some power center that will also have help economic development. Uh, uh, and, and I think that the, that the community badly needs that. Um, Bird, if you could provide something uh, that would help us um, be able to ponder ranked choice voting, sure. but especially um, how you're saying that can kind of supersede the district at large uh, uh, debate uh, sure. and it can produce minority candidates. I think that would be very helpful. Um, and I know what California is a, is a state that utilizes uh, ranked choice voting, I think, at the state level. And, and all, uh, Maine does, and then there's a whole host of communities in California, but across the country now, they're either doing it or moving toward it. Okay. Yeah. Craig, do you know of any that you, do you know of any that utilize ranked choice voting? Oh, okay. All right. Uh, Ursula. Um, I would like to say that I'm not representing any constituents. Um, I do feel like we should have a mayor that is voted in. Um, I'll use the term a good, strong mayor, accountability, community engagement, um, a lot of things that everybody else has covered. Um, I feel like if we vote on a mayor coming in, when we're voting for the city commission, you're thinking about voting on a com city commissioner not, and not which city commissioner is going to eventually become mayor. I feel like this should be standalone so that you know this person is who you you, know, you would like to have in a mayor. I feel like um, whether it be a year or two years, it'll give that person a chance to engage the community and the community to engage with that person. Um, at this point, just doing it part-time and things like that is not enough time for that person to make a significant change on the community. So I do, I'm definitely for um, voting a mayor in. As far as districts, I think on one side, it would be really good for Lawrence. You know, on another side, it may or may not be. It just depends on how it turns out. Um, I, I'm waiting for us when we have our discussion on districts. I'd like to hear more about how districts run and things like that. Um, some people are definitely against it because they think it would split Lawrence, kind of like when we decided to have two high schools. Um, but I, on the other hand, I do think it could really give different parts of the community that may be neglected or left out, you know, a voice. So I'll just wait for that conversation. I, I think I think it's become I think it's pretty clear that whatever we decide to do, one of the values has to be representation um, and minority representation. Um, so how we do that? Okay. okay, that's I think that's everybody. Oh, Craig. Now, what kind of reaction do you have to what you've heard, Craig? I know you hate the idea of a directly elected mayor, but. No, I, I, well, as I as I say, I think I've said, I know I said it to Tony, I just was excited to be a fly on the wall in this conversation. So I, okay. it's really exciting to me and and have such, such you know, great thoughts around this. Um, you know, I, 
I've experienced the form of government here for um, you know a year and a half, and there there's some things that stood out to me right away um, that you know not having been in an all generally elected and not having a directly elected mayor, uh, there were things that you know absolutely stood out to me. I, I'd say the, the only things that kind of haven't been covered and to and to highlight some of the things that I responded well to. Um, the, there's some traditions that are assumed to be um, the, the, uh, inviolate here. Um, the appointments, for one, it was already mentioned that the appointments, the, the appointments, they're recommended by the mayor, that they, they are appointed by the commission. Um, that is something that's a tradition that they respect that the mayor kind of makes these decisions, but the, we have an action item that actually ratifies them by the commission. So that that is something that's respected. And also that, you know, the election of the mayor, that's a feature that uh, from the outside before I came here, I thought was a really neat thing. You you have a, a body that elects its own leader and it kind of appoints that and that there's some great opportunity there because sometimes you get a reluctant body being led by somebody that they'd rather not to be led by. And I thought that was such a great form and it isn't used here. It just has never, ever been used. They just rotated or maybe once or twice in the history with great controversy. So um, so it, it's just not being used. So even though it could be a, a neat feature, it's not. Um, the uh, tenure isn't something that's been mentioned here, but it's something that absolutely stood out to me as soon as I got here. And uh, I asked, actually asked the city clerk to tabulate this. And over the last 24 years, the average tenure is four is 4.8 years. So if you take out my Amex from that, it's, <laughs> it's 4.0. It's 4.0. And I, I consider this, I consider the elected uh, official, the local elected official to be a very complex, very difficult job. It way more than it looks like from the outside and the incumbents here, the people that have served probably would acknowledge that. And this is a, you know, huge $250 million organization and we do the, the widest variety of services and most people get elected thinking about two or three or four and I, I still have to bring them up to speed to adopt the budget. So I just, tenure hasn't been mentioned here and it's something that stood out to me and there's all sorts of ways when you talk about values and things that maybe work or maybe don't work, that's something that I would put into the mix as well. The, um, the districts versus the the seats, I just say that you could have seats, and I think it's already been mentioned, you could have all at large, but they aren't a team of rivals. So I do think it's an interesting feature when you have your team trying to work together. And of course, I'm motivated to have a high functioning body that makes just gives me decisions. You know, that's kind of what the city manager looks for. Just give me a decision. That's what I'm I'm searching for all the time. So one that works well and makes decisions efficiently is something that's an important part. But when you're running against each other, kind of perpetually has been mentioned, that has an effect. And I just would you know, raise that up as something worth considering. Um, but the, the job is very difficult and not being able to stay in it for a, a period of time to learn it, to go through some budget cycles, to get kind of your hand burn on the stove on an issue that's not going to resurrect and, and, and re, reuse that knowledge base for another five or six years because of cycles, it, it just kind of you miss that. And okay. so I think get, getting some tenure pushed up is worth talking about here and why is it that it doesn't happen here. Uh, and some of it could be the civil discourse that was mentioned um, because, you know, it's been it's a pretty it's a pretty rough environment here in my experience. And so I, I do acknowledge that. And there may be some ways that this addresses that. Um, and, you know, re, we're returning priorities constantly. That's been mentioned. But from a, a city manager's perspective, not being able to stay focused on hard things. So we don't necessarily address the long term. We address what we can get done in two years or four years because your expectation is you're not going to be there. Well, most of the hard things that great cities do take 20 years to do. And you need somebody that's committed to seeing those next few steps pushed along the way. And I think there is a, I think that is why some of our, our lack of strategic big issues isn't there. And I, I know that was mentioned before. 
Um, and the only the last thing I'll say is there may be, and I'll leave it to your discretion, John, but uh, some little mention of the city managers and our code of ethics and kind of the role we play. I know we're not going to kind of do that, but I think it might be a useful thing to understand that at some point. Oh, okay. Good. Uh, let's see. I think we've heard from everybody at this point. Um, and I want you, you know, send me um, a couple of you have requested, I've requested things from you. And um, if you have um, some information you would like to send me, let me know. I'll filter it and, uh, and, and you know, try to summarize it uh, if I can. Um, it, it does seem to me I, that um, just trying to uh, pull things together a little bit, that the issue of a directly elected mayor does not really seem to be a big issue for this group. Um, that we're not clear exactly what those powers might be, but the idea of a four-year directly elected, directly elected mayor, um, I don't think we're going to need to talk about that in it in and of itself, at least not very much. Am I missing something on that? Okay, what I'll try to do, go ahead, Rachel. Rather than completely tabling that, uh, I think we should uh, look at options um, and then make the decision. I realize that We've only got until one July, but we should. You know, I suggest we look at that and then decide at a later okay. point, as opposed to today. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, so I'll I'll lay it out and maybe um, uh, check with some of you, or just and then uh, we'll see if we can get it on the agenda for next meeting uh, to make a decision on um, on at least the the basics of it. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Um, let's see, do we have any any public comment? Uh, Chris Fowler, Flowers? Yeah, hi, this is Chris Flowers. And um, I just wanted, I had a note I just made. Um, you were talking about rank choice and I've mentioned this before, and I think, I, I mean, I, I was told this, that Kansas state law prohibits rank choice and that we would not be able to do rank choice. So that's one thing I had to say. And then um, I could be wrong about this. I mean, I was told this from someone else. I, I think it was one of the commissioners, but um, I think also that we were going to um, next year, look into adding that into our legislative priorities that we ask that the state let us do rank choice. I, I mean, I'm not sure it's been a little bit because it was just brought up. So that's just one idea I just wanted to say. And then also, I was thinking you're talking about districts. I just wanted to let you all think about renters. Um, I've, I've heard that a little over half this population in Lawrence is renters. And if we do districts, how that's going to um, put a, a strain if you are running for a commissioner and you live in a district and you're a renter, if you choose to move out of your apartment, you're going to have to find a place you can afford and want to live in in your district. And that's going to, I mean, that's going to put more of um, a barrier for some people to run for a commission if they're a renter, if they're like, if we divide the town up into like four quadrants, that's like 25% of the town that you're going to have to live in. So I, I'd like that to be addressed when we're looking in the district thing. And also, if you live in a district and you're like your commissioner is going to change if you move around a lot. And also what separates us from other cities that have a large um renter population is that our renters are also 
college students and they're going to be moving a lot more like my first year here I lived at on campus then I lived at Meadowbrook over the summer and then I lived over on 6th street and that that could potentially well I don't know it depends how the districts are made that could be three different districts I lived in in just the first year and then also you're talking about how appointments were made. And one thing I was just thinking about is back in when Stuart Boley was mayor, him and Soden kind of got in a fight because I guess Boley wasn't a point like wasn't right making appointments to some board. And I think Soden was accusing him of purposely not making appointments because um, he didn't want the board to exist. So in Instead of making appointments, he was just not going to appoint anyone to the board. At least that's kind of the feeling I got when they kind of got into their little argument. So I just wondering, Jaren, if you could all look into that and like, how was that resolved? Because I don't know. I I I would suck if we get into like that situation and now the mayor's like in a four year term. So as long as there's ways for um, the other commissioners to do something if the mayor decides to act up and like just purposely like just bend the rules or you know just purposely be a roadblock so i like to see when we talk about what powers the mayor has what powers can we give the commissioners to counteract when the mayor abuses his or her power um i guess um that's about all I have to say for now, but just wanted to throw that out there. Thank you. John? Yeah, John? Yeah, Bert. Uh, I just looked, well, while Chris was talking, I just looked up, uh, I just Googled ranked choice voting in Kansas, and there is a AG opinion that says since uh, ranked choice voting is not mentioned in the Kansas Constitution, uh, one way or another, there is no reason it's not prohibited. So a uh, Chris, Chris's perspective, whoever told him that was, was was incorrect. This was right from a AG, recent AG uh, opinion asked for by a uh, a state legislator. So that that's the uh, that's the current state of of Kansas law as far as I can see it. Okay, thanks, Bird. Thank you. Are there any other public comments? Anyone else wants to make a public comment? Uh, Kyle Kobe, Planner. Uh, there's nobody in the room here to speak on this item and or or uh, any item, and uh, I'm not seeing any other digital hands being raised in my Zoom screen. So did you say there's nobody there, uh, Kyle, or there is? There uh, is nobody here to speak. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, so let's see. I think um, so. Some of you are send me some stuff. I'll try to pull some things together. Um, we need to figure out how we're going to work on this on this stuff, which is not not clear to me yet. Um, whether we're going to want um, you know a few people working on this or a few people working on that. Or we just want to all come together and and talk, and then um, and maybe send out some information ahead of time, and make the decisions as a as a whole group. So we'll have to figure that out. But um, is there any any other business? Any other comments? Uh, yeah, John. Yeah, hi, it's John Wilson, task force member. Uh, this is not anything. Uh, Formal, but I would just say for future meetings, given the meeting time, if we can just lean into working virtually and have our dinner and have our kids interrupt us occasionally and just all agree that that's okay, that would be very helpful. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Um, is this time and is Monday night at this time? I know Rachel, you had used said you might have an issue on this. Yes, uh, I, I've got a standing appointment at um, from 14 to 16.30 in Topeka on Mondays. And um, 
just so I don't get clogged up in traffic, would it be possible to change the meeting time to 1800? I realized that the that's, well, that's six o'clock in the evening. Yeah, let's um, just check, let's just check it out. I mean, does anybody have um, a considerable difficulty with a six o'clock start? Uh, John Hugh Carter here, and I'm sorry when I filled out the um, availability form, I I didn't have I, I'm a, the health department board meetings are Monday night oh. uh, this Monday each month, so. Just, just this. Uh, what is this? The second Monday. I think it's the second Monday. Second Monday. Yeah, and that's at five o'clock. They usually five to seven. So, um, so okay. So you might have to miss one then. If we do it. Um, let's um, uh, give me a couple of weeks, um, and I'll communicate with a few of you. We'll figure out where we head next. Um, but why don't we plan our next meeting to, oh, I better check my calendar too. So John, <laughs> a good John. Idea. so that would be, what are we at? March 29th. Okay. So let's, uh, let's do March 29th at six o'clock. John, this is Bobby Walthall. Yeah, Bobby. Um, so this room has limited availability because while we're doing virtual meetings, oh. we have to have all of the meetings here in the commission room, all of our advisory boards. So I attached to the agenda a copy of our advisory board calendar to kind of show you all the availability of the room. And I can share my screen if that's easier for you. I have it pulled up. Um, I know March 29th will not work because we have a joint city county oh. commission meeting that evening. So I do know that that won't work. But let me pull up this um, calendar for you. Okay. So all of these dates in March are taken. Um, with the exception of March 17th, March 19th, March 23rd, March 25th, March 30th, March 31st. Maybe what we should do, um, maybe what we should do is another poll. Yeah, if we go into April, you can kind of see the dates that are open as well. Yeah, let's, let's do a poll. Uh, Bobby, can you organize that for I us? I sure can. Yeah. And um, so I'd like to do something in about 10 days to two weeks, something like that. Sure. Something and like and that. how often are you, are you wanting to meet every two weeks? That'd be nice. Okay. And evening meetings, I'm assuming, I'm hearing. Uh, probably the six o'clock time. Okay. And um, it's probably going to be pretty limited. I'll put what's out there and then we'll okay. figure it out. It could be that we could ask a couple of, oh. it, it, it kind of, we, I can work it out. We'll, we'll see what we can do. And then I'll put a couple of meetings out for you all. Okay. Thanks, Bobby. Uh, mm -hmm. let's say John and Ursula, you, uh, had something you wanted to say? Oh, I was just going to say that um, the meeting at this time is bad for me, but I think we're going to move it. I I yeah. chair the library board meeting, and it's always the third Monday. I was just uh -huh. running from that meeting to right to this meeting. So if it ran over a little bit, I would be late. Every okay. Time, so. Okay. And let's see, John Wilson. That was uh, an errant hand still being raised from last time. But while I have the floor, I would just say that I appreciate um, all of Bobby's work organizing this. Yes. No yeah. kidding. No kidding. Yeah. Um, okay. So if there's uh, no other comments, I think we can end our meeting. Any Anything else?
I think it's going to be exciting to be with so many people who are public service oriented or public or community oriented. We don't get that chance very often. And Tony, thank you very much for um, for stay, for sticking with us. Thank you. Thank okay. you, John. Thanks bye a lot, bye, everybody. Thank you, John. Yeah. Thanks, John. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Ursula, my.